Before you spend all this time, all this money, do all these courses, you want to make sure that you actually like this job, that this is something you can actually do, that you'll be good at, that you'll enjoy. And today in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the questions that you should be asking yourself before you start chasing the business analyst career. The questions that will help you evaluate if this is something that you will enjoy. So I'm going to go play my intro. Please come right back. It's going to be a great discussion. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Stay to the end because it's going to be good. I'll see you in a minute. So thank you for coming back. You are here because you want to find out if business analyst is right for you. So let's get into it. Now, I don't want you to start um, evaluating yourself if you're going to be a good business analyst simply by looking at the skills that a business analyst needs to have, right? So you don't want to look at all the skills and knowing how to you know, translate between the business and development team and all this stuff. And you're like, oh my God, I don't even know if, it's, if I'll be good at this. It's okay. You shouldn't be evaluating yourself against these skills because skills you can learn. When you get into the job and you get into the environment, you can learn the skills, you can learn the tools, you can learn a lot of stuff. What you need to use to evaluate if you'll be good at this is some things that are kind of innate in your behavior already. There are things that now that I look back on it, I've always been doing a little bit of business analysis. I just didn't know what it was called. I didn't know that this was a career, but I've always been doing some things. And those things have helped me a lot to be able to gra gravitate towards this career. Right. So I want to share with you what those things are. And then you can see if you have those things already, then that would be great indicator that you are already um, apt to become a business analyst. If you don't have all of them, you can still evaluate if this is something that you can be willing to do or to learn. But you don't have to evaluate yourself based on what job descriptions say, because that's not what's gonna help you stay in this career. Um, and things that you're gonna learn, you can learn and keep learning. You're always gonna be learning new things anyway. It's the things that are kind of traits, you know, it's like, it's like, natural to you it comes naturally anyway those are the things that's going to help you when you actually become a business analyst so the first thing is natural curiosity do you have natural curiosity and what do i mean by natural curiosity it's this curiosity into a variety of topics that may not have to do with anything that will like give you money or job related or school related. It's just this, this vast amount of things that you're actually interested in, that it's something that is more than just a passing interest. You actually actively find ways to find out about these things and there is no real direct benefit to you. It's just knowledge that you're gathering right it's just this curiosity um, and this, the focus here is on the variety because if you're interested in one thing and that's all you want to know then that's not really natural curiosity because it's not wide enough in in our context right so for example if you like cars and you want to know all about cars and engines and all about you know fuel injection and all this different stuff but everything you're interested in is cars then I feel like that's not really natural curiosity because you don't expand your knowledge to other things. You just gravitate towards this one thing that you love and that's all you really want to find out about. Natural curiosity is that you can have this passion that you really love, that's your passion, right? And then you have interests. I'm interested in this and that and all this stuff. And then you have this curiosity about stuff. Like you just want to know and you go out off your way to find out about these things. So you, you have a wide wide very open mind to different things and you actually take steps to go find out about it so i'll give an example 
I always was interested in subsistence living, right? I, I'm interested in how people live off their land without having to go to the store to buy anything. And so because I'm Jamaican, I can see that in Jamaica because, you know, you could live in the countryside, we always have sunshine and there's water and things grow so people can live off their land. But like when I started thinking about places like Alaska, where it's cold for half of the year and it's you know there's snow and nothing can grow like how do people live off the land in alaska and so i would read books about it i would watch documentaries about it you know i'd i just be engrossed in it just wanting to find out more about it it's like the more i learn the more i want to know i'm like oh wow they have this tundra and that leads me to finding out oh my they they actually hunt fish below the ice and oh my god like everything is like exciting to, to me to just find out more now i don't get paid to do this there is it's not tied to any job i'm doing it's, there's no real benefit except just knowledge gathering right so it's this curiosity that you have you just want to find out stuff and things that have no you don't even see the relationship between the things like i'm interested in history you know i want to understand how the great wall was built and i go study what happened when they were building the great wall and i want to know all about that story there so it's just the variety is the point here right so how this will help you as a business analyst because you'll be working in an organization that has different departments and different people and different things that they're all doing now you won't know everything but even though they put a project in front of you sometimes these projects interconnect with different things and so if you naturally have natural curiosity you may find ways to go find out about what the other departments are doing or what you know what the c-level executives are coming up with and so you you kind of want to know more about the whole big picture so that you can see where your project fits in and then you can come up with better solutions to problems when you understand the scope and the 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 the, the high level things does that make sense? It's more about just you having that curiosity to push you to find out more than what's placed in front of you. The other thing to evaluate if you'll be a good business analyst is also you are, you are dissatisfied until you understand why. Like there is, there is this nagging dissatisfaction when somebody gives you an answer that doesn't really explain things. You want to understand why. You just you want to know the root cause that is something that will really help you as a business analyst because that's what we do we have to go below sometimes what we're being told and try to dig deeper to find out the root cause so this is something that might be innate to you already so if you're the kind of person where when somebody gives you an answer like that's just the way it is that's how we've been doing things that doesn't satisfy you <laughs> then that's a good indicator that you're not you're not the kind of person that just takes surface level answers. You want to dig deeper and that's something that will help you well when you become a business analyst. The other thing that will help you that's natural to you already is if you feel like you're always solutioning something. You're the kind of person that people come to for answers to questions. So like you, you're always helping people to find a solution. But even more than that, when you experience a service, that's not good like a bad experience you're the kind of person that's thinking of wow you know they could improve this if they did this like this could be better like you're always finding a solution whereas the average person just says what an awful service and they're done like you know that's it for you it goes a step further it's like it's awful but we could have just done this or we could have just done that and that would have made the service much better i'll give an example i went to the doctor recently to get my regular checkup and i got there on time because i made my appointment but i still had to sit outside for 20 minutes just waiting for them to call me to go in and while i was sitting out there um in the lobby area they had a television playing and the television was on the weather channel and the first five minutes was okay because they you know talked about the weather and so on and then i realized that they repeat the same story again the next five minutes and then another five minutes so I was there for 20 minutes. I heard the same thing four times. So I was like, wow, you know, I'm here at the doctor's office. I'm here to do a checkup, but still my experience is not good because I'm, I'm, I'm realizing how much time is passing by the TV because it's so annoying, you know? So if they had the TV on a different channel, at least 
that would have actually helped me to pass the time better because now I'll be entertained not realizing how much time is passing. But because they had it on the Weather Channel, now it just makes it obvious. I'm like, oh my God, do I have to hear this again? <laughs> you know, so that's one thing. And then when we went inside, they finally come and got me. When I went inside, they had me weigh myself, but I had to shoot my sneakers on. I didn't want to weigh with my sneakers on. And I looked around and there was no chair. So I had to stoop to take my, to unlace my sneakers. Then I take my weight and then I had to stoop again to lace my shoes back up. And the nurse was standing there with her folder and I felt like I was being rushed, like hurry up. Like I want to, you know, I felt like I was being rushed. Now all they needed to do was have a chair so that you could just sit and comfortably put your shoes back on. Because I am sure that there are many people who don't want to weigh themselves with their shoes on. So that was another thing. And this is just how my mind works. As I'm going through an experience, I'm coming up with how we could solve it. That's just, that's just how it works in my head, right? Then we went in and she brought me to a room and the, the nurse was, she took my blood pressure and then she was asking me a bunch of questions and entering into her computer. Through the whole interaction, she was looking at her computer and I'm on the bed. She never looked up to look at me. She never looked at me. She was just focused on getting everything out of what I'm saying to put it in her computer. So the interaction was very cold. You know, it wasn't friendly. It wasn't good. It was like, it was like I was talking to a robot, <laughs> to be honest. And then I was in there for 35 minutes more. And this time, this is a very small room, right? And I'm in there and I can't see anyone and nobody's coming in to talk to me. And I'm like, wow, I was just complaining about the weather channel outside. I would have preferred to be outside watching the weather channel over and over again than to be in this isolated room with no one. And I was like, I'm not sick. So I can bear this, but if I was really sick and this is the environment you put me in, I would feel like mentally sick. Like I would be, I'd be worse, <laughs> you know? Eventually the nurse, the doctor came, we did our, she did her thing and I left. So as I went through that experience, I kept thinking to myself, you know, when I went to the dentist, what made the dentist experience so good and this doctor's experience so terrible and one of the things i remembered going to the dentist was that one when i stepped to the door i had my appointment i did have to wait but it was a very short wait and maybe the wait was short because they had more dentists than their doctors at the place i was coming from but also the receptionist was very friendly you know she came over and she was like hey thank you for coming coming in on time um the dentist will be with you shortly can i get you some water you know she was just very very friendly and then they had the tv on and it was playing some kind of I don't know, home and garden channel, something interesting. So I didn't feel the weight. And then when I finally got into the dentist chair, I remember them lowering me down and I looked up and I had TV that was on the home and garden channel right above me. So as I'm getting my teeth fixed, um, I could stare at something. I was just staring at the ceiling. And then there was another TV at the other side to make sure that, you know, if I had to turn my head this way, I could see, and this way I could see, and if I was up, I could see, and no, it wasn't annoying. Like I wasn't seeing three different things. It was just very focused. And I was like, wow, there was something about the way they just presented everything that was good. Also, the offices were aesthetically appealing. They had plants, and you know, I love my flowers. <laughs> they had plants, and it was well decorated. It just looked really good. It just felt fresh and new and modern, and it, it, I, I had a good experience. I, don't, I couldn't put my finger on it, but I knew I felt better when I went to the dentist's office than the experience I just had at the doctor's office. So it's this kind of thinking that goes on in your mind all the time. You might be in a long line at the bank and you're like, wow, why is this line so long? Maybe if they had a kiosk right here, I could do some transactions right here. Or maybe if they had a mobile app, I wouldn't have to come into the bank. And things like that goes on in your head all the time. That is solutioning. And that's a very good indicator that you would be good as a business analyst because you're always looking for a solution to a problem. You're not just okay with experiencing the problem, but you actually find solutions. Another indication that you'd be a good business analyst would be if you like to read fact-based material. I know you were like, oh yeah, I love to read, I love to read. But it's not about reading novels. It's not about reading stories and novels because the kind of writing that you're going to encounter when you're reading novels is going to be more uh, creative, you know, it has a lot of emotional effect on it and stuff like that. So you keep engaged. But if you could read a very fact 
based materials such as reports such as research articles um, you know just stuff on the internet that you find that's based on fact like science information and stuff like that if you can absorb that then that would be a good indicator that you'd be a good business analyst So the other thing is being able to write. Now this almost didn't make my list because I was like, you can learn how to write. You know, it's not really something you have to be innate. But really, um, if you like writing anyway, that would be great because then it'll be natural to you anyway, right? Because you're gonna have to write a lot of documents. So if you already like to write, that's a good, good, strong indicator. Um, and you should use that to evaluate whether or not business analysis is right for you. The other thing is to communicate. So communication is very important and being able to translate is also very important. So what do I mean by translate? If you're the kind of person that can take a lot of different varying information and somehow narrow it down to make, to make sense and then explain that to somebody else, then that would be a great, great way to test if you're, a good, if you're going to be good as a business analyst. For example, your friends come to you and they're complaining about a bunch of stuff and they're blah, 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 blah. And then you need to explain this to another friend and you're like, okay, well, she came to me and what she basically said was blah, blah, blah. That's a good indication <laughs> that you can translate and that you can be a good business analyst because you can take all of this noise, all of this information that doesn't even, it's not really relevant and you can slice it down to what's needed or what's important and then you can translate that to somebody else for somebody else to understand. That's a very, very good and strong indicator because when you become a business analyst, that's what you're going to do. You're going to do a bunch of research about a bunch of stuff. And you're going to talk to different people. They're going to tell you their opinion. And you're going to take all of that in the context of what you're trying to do, narrow that down, pick out what's important, pick out the essence of it, translate that to a different team, or even write a document about it, or create a new process about it that can actually solve problems, right? So it's good to be able to translate and communicate as well. The other thing that you'll need to know is if you can interact well with strangers. So this is something that you may find that you're good at or maybe not so good at because if you go to a party, for example, and you're the only one invited there, you don't know anybody, can you strike up a conversation with people that you don't know? You know, when you go to your friend's house or family members you haven't seen in a long time and they bring friends, how easy are you to interact? With people that you don't know and so if you don't have to be a, a extrovert you don't have to be a person that like the life of the party and you're the one making everybody happy and you're dancing you know in the middle of the party or whatever no <laughs> you don't have to be the extra extrovert and you know life of the party person you just have to be able to communicate to strangers clearly and be be, be sociable a little bit so i'm i think i'm very introverted i actually don't like to be around a lot of people i like my me time you know i think i'm very introverted but i have my my quirks you know i have my personality and when i'm out i can i can i can meet new people easily you know i can strike up a conversation easily the reason why that's important is because you're going to talk to a lot of different stakeholders and everybody's personality is different some people are like very quiet some people are ah, some people are like don't bother me i don't want to talk to you so <laughs> you're gonna have to use your social skills a lot to talk to people you don't know and so if you're the kind of person that's so so shy you don't want to strike up a conversation you don't know how to you know to approach someone um this might not be the right role for you. So you don't have to be an extrovert. Let me say it again. You do not have to be an extrovert. You just have to be sociable and be willing to talk to strangers um, for the purpose of the projects that you're going to be working on as a business analyst. And the other thing I want to say about being a business analyst is you have to be comfortable with change. So by that, I mean, you have to be able to thrive in an environment where there's constant change and ambiguity. This is something that we all struggle with. Change is the only constant, but it's the thing that people are most afraid of. Like people just don't like change. They don't. Um, and so if you're the person that's, not to say you're gonna go out of your way to change everything, but if you're a person that's very, very opposed to change, you're not gonna do well in this career because everything you're working on is changing something. 
and you are going to be changing as well so for example let me give you this i was in jamaica and then i left to go to china for like two years they just up and left <laughs> because i wanted to experience a different culture and everything else that came with that and i remember when i was in china i had this really really good friend chinese friend and she was teaching me how to make jiaozi which was i'm sure i'm saying it wrong but it was a chinese dumpling right and there's a certain way that you do the dumpling you put the meat in and you fold it a certain way and so on and i was just being my creative self oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna change it this way and it's gonna do that she was like no no that's not how we do jiaozi like this is how we've been doing it for 2000 years or however thousands of years and this is how you do it so she was very very offended by me trying to change how I did the Chinese dumpling. So she's a person, no shade to her, but she could not be a business analyst because she does not like change. You gotta do it the way our ancestors have been doing it for thousands of years, this is what we do, and she's not gonna change, <laughs> right? It's just an indication of the way people are willing to do something different and if you're the kind of person you like things to be done this way then this way then this way then this way you're very you know straight and narrow in the order in which you get things done and somebody takes something out of the way you're like ah, it's not gonna work for you <laughs> it's just not because you're gonna be the agent of change so if you yourself don't like change the other thing is to be in an ambiguous environment. So ambiguity is not something that we like, but normally when you're a business analyst, you're in that environment. So if you're the, per the kind of person that you gotta know exactly how the thing is gonna work before you even try it, it's not gonna work for you. you, you you're not gonna do something as an experiment to find out how it's, how it's going. You wanna know, okay, if I do this, I want to make sure this is the outcome and if i do this i want that like you're very rigid with that you're not gonna be too successful because a lot of what we're doing is going to be based on feedback so you're going to listen to people's feedback change listen to people's feedback change until you perfect what you're doing but if you're the kind of person that you just want to know all the steps and you want to know every single detail you're not going to always have that and so you're, you're going to find yourself struggling a lot in the business analyst career So there you have it everybody there you have it those are the things i think you can use to gauge whether or not you're going to be good as a business analyst or whether or not you're going to enjoy the business analyst career before you spend all that money do all those courses invest all this time i want you to really do the self-evaluation and i am coming out with a self-assessment guide ebook that i'll be putting up on my website shortly that you can download and do this test on yourself to make sure that you you actually are good with the challenges that's going to come with this career before you invest all this time and money and effort right so i really hope this video was useful for you and again please subscribe subscribe to the video like the video leave a comment you can check out my facebook page you can check out my uh, my facebook group there's also additional information available there and follow me on instagram and you can send me a message i'll try my best to respond and I wish you all the best as you embark on this very exciting and wonderful career. And I will see you next time in the next video. Thank you.